Welcome to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey everyone, it's your friend Debbie Potts doing another episode on how to build your health from the inside out. And as we are often exercising a little bit more than we should, possibly over training and under recovery, we're adding additional sources of stress to our body. So my mission is to help educate you and create awareness of your red flags when you are doing too much in life. And that doesn't just mean how much exercise you may be doing too much, too frequent, not enough recovery time. Often there's people that don't exercise enough, but all of us probably do a little bit too much and don't often listen to the body's signals or red flags to say, hey, wait a minute, I need a rest break. I need a day off and just go for a walk. I need some yoga. Instead, we are trained to be competitive, hardcore athletes to override those signals. And that often leads us to internal breakdown and burnout. As you know, my story, if you read my book, Life is Not a Race, it is a journey. And I always go back in time and look at you know, what happened to me and how my story can help you prevent becoming a broken athlete as I've been since 2013 and, you know, still have issues because I never slowed down enough. And as I run my own functional lab test again, as I'm a FDM practitioner, I'm trying to do that more full time now and a nutritional therapy with that for clients to help optimize their health from the inside out to improve immune system and resiliency, improve your vitality, that the end result is improved performance in daily life and your exercise performance, but also longevity. My labs, I just retested as I shared with the Dutch hormone panel and I did the GI map and I did the uh, which one called the microbiome labs. They have a new biome FX lab test. And in the fall, I did a metabolic assessment test and a saliva cortisol test, which I don't like as much as Dutch complete test gives you so much more information. And it's also a 24 hour profile, but with urine. So it's a little easier to take. So you can listen to and watch my podcast and video version with a Dutch complete test practitioner naturopath Dr. Rice I posted on my low carb athlete YouTube channel which you can find a bunch of other videos that are upcoming episodes on the audio podcast version coming up next few months because I'm so ahead of time on my episodes and my health is just a good example to share with you how you can be fit, strong, lean, you're able to ride your bike, you're doing marathons, you can do an Ironman, but what is going on under the hood? You don't know unless you do the lab testing as I just recently did again. And as I said in previous episodes, I have a gut infection and I have H. pylori that hides in your stomach organ and I had it when I started doing all these functional labs back in 2013-14 and had blastohominus and H. pylori and overabundance of E. coli and I have no clue that's going on and they're hard to eradicate unless you reduce all of your stressors and let your body heal repair and rebuild but if you continue to exercise and kind of push the envelope as i always did over the last eight years i take one step forward two steps back and so i was never able to really heal and get rid of this hidden internal stressors that are chronic they're non-stop causing inflammation in my entire body because you have this gut bug (laughs) and other bad microbes living in your body in your microbiome and they're causing dysfunction and stealing my nutrients that I need and I'm not able to break down my protein and get my amino acids and help my muscle repair 
and muscle growth and recovery and I'm getting my hormones dysfunctional as we went through the Dutch complete test. My estrogen and DHAs are really low and I have oxidative stress of course, which is probably what a lot of us have from exercising too much and really feeling this whole domino effect. And the point is I've tested and done all this and I've just been on this journey for a long time but I never really slowed down. And being at home right now and forcing ourselves to not go anywhere as much as you can is just running and biking and walking from my own house. But your schedule's different, right? I mean, we don't have a club to go to swimming. I don't have to go lift weights at 5.30 in the morning to get to my personal training clients at 7 a.m. I'm not training a client at their house Tuesday, Thursday nights, five to six, and getting home at 6.30, you know, stuck in traffic. Our life's different. Then there's good things. I mean, I love not having this rigid schedule as I've had for years. I've been a personal trainer since college and worked at athletic club and then ran my own business for the last 12 years. And it's kind of a gift in all this chaos to sleep in, wake up without an alarm. Except for my, we set alarm today because now I'm sleeping until 6.30 and I, I do need to get to work and start doing all this stuff is my schedule is 8 a.m. So I think we really need to take time right now and take advantage of this time that we're staying at home to work on our health. You know, you can run a functional lab tests through a practitioner and ship them out from your own house or drop them off at the UPS store. But the saliva test, a urine test, a stool test is something you can run from order the pack, the testing boxes shipped to your own house. You do the test, you ship it back. We get the results. We correlate it all with your main health complaints and goals and areas of opportunity with some other nutritional therapy intake forms. So I'm not trying to sell you on my coaching services as a health detective, and that's my passion and purpose and my mission right now to do that. But my main point today is to talk about how we don't know if we're healthy on the inside out. All this stuff in the media is just driving me nuts, is saying, you know, stay home, be healthy. But today I posted a video of this doctor who said it right. Doctors, the politicians, political nutrition, it's all big pharma, right? Where everyone tends to depend on the government to help us get a vaccine from coronavirus or for coronavirus so we don't get it. Well, that's going to take a year or two. And it's like any vaccine. It's not guaranteed. And there's so much we don't know about coronavirus. If you get it, do you get it again? You know, are you going to, uh, you know, have health issues and respiratory problems, have to go to the hospital? How is your body going to react? We don't know. And what you do know is if you're healthy or not, if you run functional lab testing, identify your areas of opportunity, which means what part of your body is out of balance? What's What do we need to do to restore your health and vitality by bringing it back to a cellular level homeostasis balance? And this video today, this doctor I shared on Facebook today, I can't remember his name, I'll pull it up after, put it in the show notes, but the immune system is what he is saying that we need to work on. And I've been saying this every day for the last couple months. It is our responsibility to take ownership of our health, just as you do your car. And I was just writing a blog. I'm like, I gotta stop and write, stop writing and just start talking to you and record a podcast because I am fired up. If we can all just learn about how to build your gut health, to improve your immune system. We can build resiliency, but the government doesn't know that. Pe President Trump doesn't know that. They're not going to have us do it. It's big pharma. They want to have this, you know, billion dollar vaccines and pharmaceutical drug companies and all these people make billions of dollars if we can do this. What's interesting in this video, he's talking about the importance of vitamin C, that the ventilators were actually causing more problems. And if you gave people IV, that we've heard a lot about if you're in the functional medicine world, which is a lot of articles last couple months about China, how they treated people with IV 
uh, vitamin C. And there is a lot of information about vitamin D and building your resiliency. No one makes billions of dollars of us working on our health by working on our elements of the holistic method. Eating real food, getting rid of the inflammatory foods, which includes packaged foods that obviously is a billion dollar industry is right as well. You know, if we eat like fresh grass fed meat and vegetables that are organic and not covered in glyphosate and having food that we make meals, you know, no one makes money in the restaurants if we're making our own food. The packaged food companies, we should be buying food that's not processed. So no one's gonna promote that because they don't make money from that. They don't make money if you don't go to the doctor and buy, get a prescription for medication, for a vaccine. The solution is, is what for 50 something years, we've always been taught the wrong information that it's not dependent on a Band-Aid. The solution is you being responsible for your own health. Your body has its own innate intelligence and it knows what to do if you give the right tools, the right nutrients, the building blocks to put it back together and get it running at optimal level so it reaches that homeostasis. The body just needs the right tools to do it. And because of our way of life, because of the environmental toxins, the triggers in our environment, the constant busyness, the multitasking, the electric magnetic frequencies, the staying up late, lack of sleep, lack of going in the outdoors, that is all contributing to this poor gut health, poor weak immune system, and lack of resiliency. It is not just old people that are going to get sick. If you want to improve your self-defense system, that's working on improving your first line of defense in your gut, your secretary, IgI immunoglobin A, it's a whole article I wrote, and your IgG is the, in the mucosal barrier. What is going on in your gut? Listen to what Quran says in the Microbiome Labs webinars. He's said this for years. These are not new videos he wrote on the autoimmune and the environmental triggers. It is not new news, but this is what we need to do now as if I write all the time, if your car has the engine light comes on, what do you do? You take it in and get it fixed. You figure out what's causing the engine to overheat or what's causing the car to run at high RPMs. What's causing the car to make a loud noise. We take responsibility for a car because we want to keep driving it each day and continue with your daily activities of life. But why the heck does everyone struggle with taking this self-care approach to optimizing their health? Instead, they wanna wait for some shot in their arm or some pill that they take that's gonna create this Iron Man you know, protection around their body to keep them from getting any viruses. That's not gonna happen. And when it does happen, it's not 100%. What is 100%, as someone said, is your immune system being resilient. So that video fired me up because this is what my mission is, is focusing on health coaching and getting you know, clients I take 30 days if they just wanna get a jump start, or it's a 90 day longer protocol. And that has nothing to do with my po focus on the podcast today, but I just wanted to say, you know, this is a time when we need to do something to take care of ourselves. So a few emails today, I got my inbox. Chris Kresser, great blog, had five tips for staying healthy and sane while you're working at home. I've been saying this a lot too. Here's tips from Chris, and this is what I agree with. Creating routine. When you don't have to go up to the office at a specific time, no one is watching over your shoulder, it's tempting to let go of having a schedule at all. This is usually a mistake, and in fact, having a regular routine may even be more important working at home. Chris Kresser, in this blog he posted, waking up, going to bed, regular time. I agree, huge thing that we have to do. I'm already off going to bed later because it's lighter later, and getting up is early. You know, we set the alarm for 5.30 a.m. today because yesterday I woke up at 6.30, and I need to keep a little more in schedule and maybe not have the alarm on the weekend. 
but going to bed and not staying up watching shows. I don't understand why people are running out of TV shows to watch and need new series. They're posting on on Facebook that, okay, what show to watch? I'm like, okay, one show a night, one episode. Don't watch more than that. You shouldn't be doing you know, five hours of TV every night, staying up to midnight, totally screwing up your sleep, which is the most essential time to get your body to recover and repair is the sleep, getting deep sleep. And if you're watching TV late at night without your blue blocker glasses, especially, you are going to have a crappy night of sleep. Even if you don't know it, you're not gonna have as much deep sleep as when your body repairs. So Chris says, waking up, going to bed regular time, getting dressed before work. And just as you would if you're leaving the house, I've been wearing skirts. I'm not even going anywhere. And we wake up, we do yoga or my circuit training I create at our house, Neil, my husband and I. We don't have kids, so it's not as chaotic as all these other people I feel sorry for that have kids and they're doing stay-at-home school. But it's just Neil and I. So we wake up, I make the coffee, go set up yoga or circuit training, and then we go for a walk or run in the morning. I do the infrared sauna when I don't have a meeting at 8.30. I do 45 minutes in the sauna and then shower and get dressed. I do my hair, kind of put in a ponytail. I put makeup on, jewelry, put my bracelets, my necklace on, and I put a you know cute shirt on and a skirt. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so I just think it, it feels good to shower. I don't understand why people don't shower in the morning. That's kind of gross. It's self-care and that includes putting yourself outside at sunrise, seeing the sun come up, going for some type of exercise that you sweat in the morning, movement, you know, yoga. I'm just loving Travis Elliott. His YouTube channel has tons of videos I've been posting, which ones I do on my Facebook page, but have a routine, have a routine, stick with this new routine while you're at home. It's different, but it's new and it's kind of fun. If you make it fun, it's all about attitude. So that was his first one. Take breaks, Chris Kresser says. I I work out, as I said in the morning, we go for our morning walk, we come back, get ready, and go to work. So you feel like you're leaving the house. When it hits lunchtime hour, 12 o'clock, 12.30, that means go out and walk, get outside, move. I don't know why people stay inside all day or if they work in an office before all this, how people do that. It's so, I don't know, what is it? It's stale air, I need fresh air, I need movement. I need sunshine, daylight. It's awful feeling to stay inside. I have windows in my office here, but I need to move outside and get that nature break. So Chris Kresser always says that as well. Take breaks, when, especially when you're working at home. Use an app or a timer. I say sometimes, you know, set an alarm to go off to get out. I just think breakfast, lunch, dinner means go outside. Doesn't mean eat. You should eat when you're hungry, not by a time of day. Uh, getting outside, like for 10 minutes or five minutes, you know, just get out, move away from computer screen. Um, you know, in the mobility, I have my rebounder here. I can bounce on it for a minute or so. You can do some squats, some walking lunges some push-ups on your stairs, maybe some stretching. I go upstairs is our kitchen. My downstairs is where my office is. So I go up and down the stairs like, oh, I'm gonna get my water, come back down. All right, now I'm gonna make my tea. So I'm always trying to move more. And plus I have a stand-up desk so I can sit or stand. But, you know, getting movement, playing with your dog, he says, you know, checking on your kids, but getting that herbal tea, getting your matcha green tea and turmeric tonic is awesome to do as well. So taking breaks. Number three, Chris Kresser writes, create and maintain boundaries. This is a big one for me. I really have a problem, as I said, people staying up late, but also on social media, on emails, text messages. You know, I think people are too connected. So we really need to disconnect and set boundaries when you're online. And I do this at home previously to the coronavirus, but I don't have any alarms on my phone. There's no sounds when people text me. There's no alerts. There's nothing. <laughs> it's There's no phone noise at all. So it's, it's setting your own boundaries that works for you. I know some people you know need to know if someone calls them or sends a message, but check when you have that time. Like, all right, I'm gonna take a break, check my text messages now and respond to them by the right time, but not 24 seven. So Chris Kresser's suggestions are when you're working from home, it's all too easy 
for work to take over every waking moment. And I think this is all the time, not just coronavirus, but especially now. And people are staying up too late. So it's setting up boundaries with work and personal life. And Chris suggests what he does is setting a time to start and finish as I do. 8 a.m. I start work, 5 p.m. I'm done, unless like Mondays I have clients till 6 o'clock that I do health coaching with. Powering down or putting away computer time when not working. For me, that's, you know, I don't look at my emails until I start my day at 8 a.m. And then I don't look at stuff after 5 p.m. I go for a walk with Neil. We have yoga now at nighttime a lot. We're trying to do yin yoga after our walk. So I'm not having dinner. We have bone broth. I have my main meal about two o'clock, 1.30. And then just evening time means go outside and walk and yoga and not looking online, you know, have a set boundaries, especially in the weekends. I try not to look at my phone and emails on Saturday, Sundays, except for a certain time, I'll, I'll do a couple hours of work to check on things and maybe do some research writing, but I think digital detox is a big thing for Sundays, as he calls it, a screen-free day on Sunday. Number four tip from Chris Kresser says, eat well. Uh, this is something we talk about all the time on our show, but it's really important right now, people working at home, I keep telling people on social media, I've been trying to do, you know, positive, healthy tips, self-care tips, like eat mindfully, not mindlessly. And kitchen is closed after dinner, so no snacking. Eat when you're hungry, so if it's a late breakfast, early lunch, and then a, a late lunch, early dinner, so you're having two meals a day, it's not necessary to snack. That means you're not eating mindfully, you're eating while you're multitasking, so you're in the sympathetic mode. You're not able to taste and enjoy the food and activate those hormones that make you feel full and satiated, the leptin resistance we don't want. So we want to feel full and eat it by eating the right fat, carb, protein ratios. Eating a bunch of carbohydrates, as we know, is going to just put you on the blood sugar roller coaster and have you constantly craving some more sugar for that dopamine hit. So eating real foods, really important, anti-inflammatory food. Uh, there's tons of info we can talk about there. And number five, Chris Crester says, go easy on yourself. Working from at home can be a big adjustment. And, you know, we weren't really prepared for working at home unless you were already homeschooling your kids and working at home full time. This is nothing new, but I feel for those people that are working full time and have their kids at home. I think it's, it's very stressful for a lot of clients that I coach and I'm trying to reduce their chronic stressors. And so we have to set boundaries up and, and have a schedule for the kids and making sure you know you have play time for them and they have recess and everyone has their own quiet time and space because we need our personal space when you're having more than, you know, it's just two of us here, but I think for families with their kids at home and like parents that are taking care of everyone, it's stressful. It's overwhelming and it's never ending. So because this is going to go on for another month, I think we have to set some rules up, set some boundaries and give yourself a break, you know, give yourself your own private time that no one is allowed in this room for one hour or you're going outside and you just want alone time. It's okay. Everyone does. Your kids need it too. So that's some tips that I got an email from Chris Cresser today. You can go to chriscresser.com and get more information from him, but that was a good one. Also, I want to talk about, I uh, put this all on a blog post, but the importance of vitamin C. There's a lot on that, right? So Dr. Myhill talked last month on my show about vitamin C and there's a thing called the, a bowel tolerance. If you've done that before, it's kind of like magnesium, you know, magnesium and vitamin C are great to do. If you have constipation, we really want to be having a good poop session, good elimination of your toxins if you poop at least once a day and have a good solid quality poop. That was a post to put the other day. If you don't want to pay for lab tests, at least make sure you're pooping the right kind of poop and right frequency. <laughs> Not pooping is a bad thing. And having, you know, 
different floaty poop or having loose stools. There's all sorts of indication. You can look up the poopy police by Paul check is a great one. Um, and then there's a stool, the Bristol stool chart that is helpful as well, but <laughs> there's great ways to tell if you're, you're doing too much. So one thing, uh, I put in the description or the instructions in the blog here on debbiepotts.net that you can really work on your vitamin C flush. If you follow the instructions, I got it from Biotics, which is a company, Biotics Northwest, I order a lot of my supplements through and as a nutritional therapist, they're very supportive. But they put this vitamin C flush video, it's on, um, it's called tuesdayminutes.com, vitamin C flush on Biotics Northwest website. The mixed or sorbic powder for vitamin C is pretty much sold out most places, so it's hard to do a vitamin C flush with that, but you can order... Biotics has a Bio C Plus as a thousand milligrams may be substituted for a flush. So you can take three tablets will equal one teaspoon of the powder. Because Dr. Myhill, if you look at her podcast, I did a video with uh, Dr. Myhill, out of the UK. She's a big research on vitamin C, mitochondria health, but she has uh, lots of information on her website on how to do a vitamin C flush as well as this blog post today gave the directions for vitamin C flush. So <laughs> they say you wanna have it when you have a day off. So we're all at home now, so you already have a, you're not not off work, but you're at home. So in case you have uh, a flush. So it's like if you go get a colonoscopy, you're cleaning out everything. But a vitamin C flush, it helps the alkalinity of your body and it's a, called a calibration test as well as a vitamin C flush, but it's a, a salt and soda bath as well they talk about. But you take this vitamin C in the powder form and drink it until you can find out, you can mix it with water. We don't want juice because that's sugar. We're low carb people here, so we don't need sugar, but drink every 30 minutes for two hours until you reach your bowel tolerance. That means you have disaster pants and have loose stools. So if no results, changing timing every 15 minutes is the suggestion. So you continue till ball tolerance is experienced, and they say explosive diarrhea is what that means. And then you calculate the number of teaspoons that you took in your flesh until you had your diarrhea, <laughs> your bowel tolerance, and then you multiply that by 75%. So if it's four teaspoons caused your bowel tolerance, then the daily dose of vitamin C that your body needs, because remember we're bioindividuals, is about three teaspoons. So then the example is you take three teaspoons and mix it in juice and water and drink it throughout the day. If excessive gas occurs, then take with food. If the gas is still a problem, reduce the dose that is socially tolerable. Socially. <laughs> That's funny. So you can tolerate your gas. <laughs> That's funny. So we have <laughs> two things. You have explosive diarrhea and you'll have excessive gas <laughs> if you do too much. Okay, so continue on this dose until the retest is done, the vitamin C calibration test, or continue until the diarrhea occurs again, then decrease by another 75%. So then the three teaspoons would become two and a quarter teaspoons. So that's in this article from um, Biotics or Tuesday Minute episode. But the really, the big thing is they're talking about how to promote health and wellness and as I shared on social media today and on um, the doctor that was on the YouTube channel videos that's saying how this is so big pharma influenced on how we're dealing with the coronavirus is really, you know, no one, no, most doctors we all know by now, if you're listening to podcasts, don't know very much about nutritional therapy. They don't have training of nutritional therapy, functional medicine in medical school. They don't learn that. They learn about uh, pharmaceutical drugs to treat things, not nutrition to treat things. So they're not aware of the research probably of vitamin C and vitamin D, antioxidants, you know, mitochondria health, unless they started to think outside the box and went outside of the traditional 
medical schooling. So we have to take that into account when we're getting all this information and guidelines from our government, know that they don't have training in nutritional therapy and they're not listening to anyone's suggestions that is from this side of the world industry of functional medicine. It's more traditional medicine looking at big pharmaceutical companies that make the virus vaccines to the virus and taking whatever medication that created for previous viruses and illnesses that could work for COVID. But it could be simple thing as taking a high dose of vitamin C as an IV and vitamin D to improve the respiratory and immune system and the mitochondria function. Hmm. But no one's going to make billions of dollars from that. So we can take ownership from our health listening to these underground podcasts as Sean Croxton started underground wellness years ago, talking about all this stuff that you don't hear above ground. So another thing in this Tuesday Minute article about really getting rid of the acidity in the body to improve wellness. I talked earlier about homostasis, and the first key to homostasis they talk in this article is to correct the pH balance. And I'll talk to Dr. Anna Quebeca, who wrote the Keto Green Diet, who is all about keto, but getting your right greens to keep alkalinity. Because if you just do protein, your pH level could be too acidic. So remember, Goldilocks effect, everything in balance, not too much of this, not too much of that, or too little of that. We have the right amount for your body, your genetic profile, your cells are all going to be different. No one's the same, right? So you can test your pH with some urine strips. And Dr. Anna will talk about that when we record our show and she sells them on her website. But to correct the pH hormones and enzymes is necessary because they can't function at optimal level at maximum capacity. And as I just was recording my recent podcast on my hormone tests and other labs that I've been running at half capacity, my hormone cortisol is below level. So I feel pretty good, but just realize if I was at optimal level, I'd be feeling awesome. And so you settle for feeling, you know, 50% feels your normal when you could be 100%. So we have to realize our cells could be running at 50% capacity. We want to be 100%. So how are you going to optimize your health to improve your immunity and your resiliency? Well, one suggestion is optimize your body getting at homeostasis with the right pH level. So the pH, oxygenated arterial arterial blood is 7.355 to 7.45. Optimal pH in carbon dioxide and your blood 7.31 to 7.4 blood ph is extremely tightly regulated so even a drop to 7.25 can bring the body to an acidic state so the blood ph level is really fine line where it's right optimal amount is so if you drop from 7.3 to 7.2 it will stimulate osteoclastic activity in the bone which means Bone degradation inhibits osteoblastic activity. Blastic means bone rebuilding and induce a multi-fold bone mineral loss. So fine line of how much is too much right there. Reduced intracellular pH causes swelling and impaired mitochondrial function. My favorite topic, mitochondria. So if we have reduced intracellular, the pH level of inside your cells will cause swelling an impaired mitochondria. We can't have that, can we? So this means that reduction in the ability to make more energy and increase energy utilization is reduced because of the impaired mitochondria. Because remember, mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cells and they make energy and increase the energy available as fat burning. So also this reduced intracellular pH brings increased intracellular free water with less efficient metabolism, protein synthesis, and increased membrane free radical production. So the article goes on, but so I'll put it in the show notes, but as the pH level drops relative acidity range, there is an increase in free radical production. We don't want free radicals. We already have enough from exercising and high stress life. So we have to 
make sure we can reduce those free radicals that the damage on the mitochondria. So article says one way to determine pH is first with morning urine, as Dr. Anna will talk about. The first morning pH reflects the body's ability to buffer excess ex acidity and net acid excess. <laughs> this means that a pH below 6.5 indicates that the buffering functional reserve of the body is deficient. The beauty of this test is that something that the patient can, it's something the patient can do, you, on their own to monitor their own diet. And that's what Dr. Anna talks about in our Keto Green program, that you measure your pH of your urine each day to know if you need to fine tune more alkaline, more acidity, where are you in that pH balance? Because a lot of women especially need more alkaline and they need more of these keto greens that she talks about and having the keto shakes. And also, uh, I also like using athletic greens. I put in my pick my blog as well. So you can do a protocol for this. They talk about in this article to increase buffering ability of the body to reduce net acid excess and relative acidity. So changing in your diet, more vegetables, you know, more of the highest alkaline ash helps stop all processed meats and refined carbohydrates as bagels and pasta. Use more Celtic, Celtic sea salt, and then that's loaded with 22 bioavailable minerals. Increase purified water to at least one quart or half of your body weight per day. Use a vitamin C calibration test as explained in the article I'll post and that I just shared a little bit, and they also have a video talking about all this. Use salt and soda baths every third day. Achieve optimal blood levels of vitamin D. Use the 25 hydroxy vitamin D test and increase vitamin D until the levels between 60 to 80 NG per milliliters. Some doctors suggest 100 NG per milliliter. The usual, usual dose to achieve this is between 4,000 to 6,000. Doses of 10,000 IU temporarily may be necessary to increase levels when not actively in the sun with your clothes, not having, you want your skin exposed to the sun to get that vitamin D, not through, it doesn't get through your clothes or through your windows. Make sure digestion is optimized, especially HCL, hydrochloric acid, in your stomach, which assists in mineral absorption, which helps buffer excess metabolic acids. Now that's another topic I love going into because most of us need HCL and digestive enzymes and help the bile flow by taking a supplement 20 minutes before we eat. So I take, um, you know, there's KPEC supplement I've taken and right now I'm doing a support digest and a bile supplement called beta TCP and I take my omega spore biotic. You want to take, build up to two of those 20 minutes before you eat your meal. So as I cook my meal, I take my supplements I leave in the kitchen. NH pylori hides in your stomach and makes your stomach organ less acidic. And in order for us to have that acidic wash so pathogens don't get through the stomach, we need to have that pH of your stomach to be 1.5 to 3.0. So if you're not acidic enough, guess what happens? You get enemies, foreign enemies that aren't supposed to get through into the next section of your digestive system is that small intestine. And so if the stomach isn't acidic enough, it doesn't have one of the first line of defense to protect what goes into the small intestine. And that's why we have, we have these little trap doors in between, you know, from entering in through your esophagus and before your stomach organ. And then there's another little flap there before it goes into your duodenum into your small intestine, then small intestine to your large intestine, then large intestine to the exit door to your colon, there's different trap doors and everything's supposed to move north to south, not be stuck there and like acid reflux is when things come back up. So the trap door is supposed to let everything move to the next section at the right time when everything's ready and prepared in a system so that kind of process gets dysfunctional when there's things not happening correctly as right acidity in your stomach. So H. pylori, as my example, is making my stomach less 
acidic, so it doesn't have the right mineral absorption and other things like intrinsic factor that help make B12 in the intestines. And then we've got iron and all these other deficiencies that you can get as well. So that's a side note. Uh, back to my list. Potassium with magnesium also helps. It's a citric formula. It supplies 1,200 milligrams of potassium and 12, 120 milligrams of magnesium. And each citrate molecule, they say, binds three hydrogen ions. So you use one teaspoon mixed with juice and increase as necessary to raise the first morning urine. Uh, another thing is consider taking magnesium to bowel tolerance. We talked about that as how it's similar to vitamin C. That's good for constipation too. So you might want to do that at nighttime before bed. It helps relax. So I think magnesium, I talked to Andy and the vitamin pure vitamin club talking about magnesium and how it makes everything relax well that's why you take it at night to help you sleep better relaxes everything also relax your bowels so you'll notice if you take too much of magnesium it will give you some uh, loose stools so you could have disaster pants as well so take it at night and wake up and be at home if you take too much. So stubborn cases of metabolic acidosis can be reversed with the correct levels of magnesium if the above are not effective. So this is more of my nutritional therapy work. What we do is use nutrition to help heal and rebuild the body. And this is to help improve your immune system. So salt and soda, alkalizing bath is suggested using Epsom salts and baking soda for 30 to 40 minutes. I have a lot of magnesium Epsom salts uh, in my guest bathroom downstairs here that I, I never use because making a bath sounds good, but putting getting enough water in the bathtub takes forever. And I always feel guilty <laughs> filling the bathtub up, but it's something good to do. Baking soda and lemon cocktails, the last suggestion. Another systemic way to alkalize coming from George Goodhart, taking the juice of a lemon, so half a lemon, and one teaspoon of baking soda in 80 ounces of water twice a day is another thing to help that acid alkaline balance. So lots of good ideas here. This is on the show notes coming from Biotics Northwest when I order a lot of my supplements. I will put that in my blog, debbiepotts.net, connect it with the show notes so you can read more about the process of doing a vitamin C flush and possibly doing um, a little bit more as we'll talk about with Dr. Anna to do a urine test in the morning to see how acidic to alkaline you are. Where is your, your balance, right? So lots to go into, but I'm really on a mission to help increase awareness of improving your immune system is not staying home locked up in your house. It's driving me nuts. I need your help to spread this message out. If you can help join my journey, my mission to help increase awareness that your immune system is 80% in your gut. We need to teach people self care, how to optimize gut health. That's getting rid of the inflammatory foods. The government's not going to teach us this because they don't have training in the area, but also they don't make billions of dollars in the food industry if we eat non-packaged processed foods that aren't killed and taking out all the vitamin, nutrition, the minerals from our food. So eating real food, you know, getting greens, proving the alkalinity. I get butcher box two, three times a month right now. We have a burger, grass-fed beef or steak. I have grass-fed butter on it or some pesto, I have avocado. I have some cruciferous vegetables to help my detox phase one and phase two, having all these great sources of nutrition from the food I eat, but it's not enough. I need to supplement. I posted a picture the other week of all the supplements I take. Yes, we need to get our nutrition from the food we eat, but it's really hard to get all that nutrition from what we eat because the way our food is grown in, as I said, soil that doesn't have the minerals in it and the pesticides, the glyphosate. And if you're eating food from animals that are not grass fed and wild caught and free range and all that, they're filled with bad bacteria, pesticides, whatever, contaminants, the contaminated animals, I say. We need to figure out 
how to optimize your health by taking some gut healing program as Microbiome Labs has a total gut restoration program I have some clients do. I myself am on a, a pathogen eradication protocol and then I'll be on my mucosal barrier repair protocol after I've finished this Matula tea for a month and then I, I'm starting this biotics protocol for getting rid of any gut bad pathogens and bacteria and overgrowth in my digestive system. So I'm on supplements I take three times a day, six to nine of them total, plus I'm taking my mitochondria booster, I'm taking my digestive enzymes when I eat in my microbiome labs, mega sporebiotic for my probiotic, I'm drinking athletic greens, and then I have my prebiotic from my, my microbiome labs, and I have my Keon aminos I throw in there, and then I got my uh, mitochondria support, my creatine, carnitine, D-ribose, and uh, something else. So I've got a lot going on, but this is people that aren't doing anything and they're not even eating right food. They're not exercising. They're not getting outside and getting that vitamin D and morning exposure to sunlight and getting fresh air and movement, getting their sleep. You know, there's all this stuff we need to do. It's not just staying home and hibernating. So I will stop rambling, but I'll put everything in my blog on debbiepotts.net and you can help join the journey of self-care with the holistic method. That book, Life is on a Race, and the manual and workbook of the holistic method is on Amazon. And I'm working on adding a new ebook addition to that on a mitochondria health and more. But you can find that on Amazon and lots of free information on my website, debbiepotts.net. So now it's time for me to go outside and get fresh air because I've been talking to a microphone for now 46 minutes. And it's time to say goodbye and go run up the stairs and go outside for a few minutes. Reset, reboot, and recalibrate the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. All right, have a great one. Make it the best day ever. Thanks for listening to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at DebbiePotts.net. You can help us to continue to grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.